Hey everyone, so welcome to another video, it's your girl Nurse Diaries and this week I am going to just talk about how it's been like um, being a one year of working on a gynecology ward. Hi, so welcome to another video. Um, so this video I'm just going to be reflecting and talking about um, how it's been working on a gynecology ward for a year. Um, so obviously you guys, if you, for those that already know, you must know the story, you must have heard me speak about it so many times. But if you're watching this and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm just going to give you a little background as to when and why I became a gynecology nurse. So. Um, my passion for gynaecology stems from my experience when I was a student nurse um, working, um, well, taking work experience. Um, so I had the opportunity to work in a hospital in Ivory Coast um, where I oversee um, uh, my mechanism operation happen. And for me, that was extremely in interesting. So for those of you that do, do not know what my mechanism operation is, it is the removal of uterine fibroids. Um, and so uterine fibroids are benign tumor um, that can occur and develop in women. Um, there's not actually a, an exact reason as to why that this why this happens. Certain things in your life can actually increase the fibroid growth. For example, diet and exercise is an example of what can actually increase the growth of uterine fibroids. Um, so yeah, so having the experience of working um, I've never even had a theatre placement when I was a student, so just being in theatre, learning about uterine fibroid, um, just seeing the reproductive system for me was so interesting and that's where my gynaecology love stems from because after that I was so interested and fascinated that I went home, I done more research and I just found it so interesting. So yeah, um, when I came back to the UK, after because I was on holidays, when I came back to the UK, I just really, really found it interesting. And then I was working on a respiratory ward, cystic fibrosis ward, um, as my first newly qualified job. Um, however, it wasn't really for me. And then I saw a job advertisement for gynecology. So I applied for it and I got the job. And here I am a year later. So yeah, it's, the year has gone by so quick. Like I'm even surprised that it's already been a year. Um, and it's really been something completely different. I don't know what I was expecting when I started working. I had to, I've had to like seek things that I haven't seen before. Um, so even though I had a, a placement in my final year um, when I was a student on a gynecology ward, it was actually very different. It made me realize that that was completely surgical. Thinking about it now, we had male patients and female patients um, in different bays and it was more like medical stuff. Um, so yeah. On the ward that I'm currently working on, um, there are a lot of gynecology patients, um, but there's also a lot of outlier patients as well. Um, so what's an outlier patient? An outlier patient is a, is basically a patient that is not like gynecology related. However, due to the demand of beds in hospitals, um, they're placed on the wards. So um, yeah. So a day in the life for me is usually going to start handover in the morning, being allocated uh, my bay or where I'm allocated so I can have side rooms or a bay um, or both and um, yeah just ensuring that I introduce myself, take observations, fully really assess my patients, get to know them. Um, get an update as to what their plan is, if it's to liaise with um, the multidisciplinary team. So the multidisciplinary team is like a team of um, healthcare professionals that come together to ensure that the right plan is set for the patient. If that means they need care outside of the hospital when they're back home in the community, that care is obtained. Um, and just to, trying to find the best thing possible to do for that patient. So usually when I have my gynecology patients, uh, some patients can come from home um, for miscarriage treatment. Different clinics, there's um, early pregnancy clinic and there's also the gynae outpatient clinics as well um, that are run. Um, but on our ward, the early 
pregnancy clinic is literally we work hand in hand with them because some ladies can be scanned and unfortunately the scan can confirm a miscarriage and then um, when that is confirmed they can choose to either take the medication to um, terminate the pregnancy at home or they can choose to have it done in hospital under supervision or choose um, the surgical route um, to get rid of the product of conception. So when that happens um, and they do come to the ward, we just ensure that we take bloods for them, we look after them, we provide as much care as possible because it is a very hard time for these individuals um, because they are undergoing something that is life-changing and it's something they'll always remember so it's really important to really provide them with as much care and as much support as possible um, we offer like support outside the community as well um, outside of the hospital sorry so we offer support outside of the hospital as well if they would like um, community support um, we give them leaflets as well and there's bereavement nurses available on the board as well to also um, offer more options for them if they feel com more comfortable talking to her and liaising with her. Um, so that is an example of what we can see on the board. Um, I also have patients that come in due to um, endometriosis flare-up or um, uterine fibroids um, which can result into ladies having extremely low haemoglobin levels um, which may require them to have a blood transfusion and um, there can be ladies that come in due to extremely heavy um, PV bleeding as well so as much as we have a lot of outliers and we deal with completely different situations you can also have orthopedic patients on the ward just everything to do with women's health um, which is something that although I was told about in my interview I wasn't expecting it to be a majority um, basis of the patients specifically um, being different specialities it is something that I have found kind of interesting because I've seen different things that I wasn't expecting to see before um, but also we've also had situations where we've had organic patients and I actually learned so much from that um, for example giving um, medication for miscarriage as well being able to counsel them not only them but also the partner that's there as well it's just been something that I don't think if I wasn't working on Ghana board, I probably wouldn't be doing um, as much or I probably wouldn't have seen or known about. So it's really interesting. The thing that's so interesting about Ghana is that you can be working on the wards and so for example I'm a ward nurse um, but you have some individuals who are working in the clinics as well and they do something completely different to you. Um, so it's really like interesting um, and I feel like some of the patients actually do go on to um, after being discharged they actually do end up being followed up in the clinics as well so it is kind of interesting um, to if you have the opportunity to follow their journey um, which is something that I actually do want to do and I do want to have more knowledge as to what they do in a clinic so I have requested for um, myself to have some time and some experience to work in the clinics see what they do there as well and I feel like it's really interesting it would be interesting and it will really enhance my knowledge i feel like wherever you go if you feel like your knowledge is now being limited or you're not learning new information it's always good to really advocate for yourself um which is what i'm trying to do right now advocate for yourself um in order for progression to occur and in order for you to be the best that you can be i think um on a gynecology ward has just in just made me realize how much women's health there's still so much we have to learn about um when it comes to research there's still a lot of questions as to why things happen um we still don't know the exact reason as to why endometriosis even occurs we don't know the exact reason as to why uterine fibroids occur and i feel like all of that is actually exciting because it makes it a thing where we are in a department where research should carry on being ongoing um, and seeing new things like medications that are being implemented for endometriosis and uterine fibroids is extremely interesting and I have realised in my past one year of working on the ward um, that I want to do more when it comes to working in gynaecology when it comes to finding out these um, finding out and learning about these new 
um, treatment options that are being implemented for these individuals. So it is extremely interesting. And not only do we deal with gynecology, we also deal with gynecological cancers as well, um, which is so interesting because I never knew you could have completely different gynecological cancers and just working closely with um, the team as well, just seeing what they do, how they implement tasks, how they implement plans is really, really, really interesting. So yeah, I would say to summarize everything, my past year working on gynecology has been extremely interesting and it's also made me realise that there is a lot more that I do want to learn. Um, sometimes it can feel that on the ward your skills can be a bit limited in the sense where once you know the basic um, pathways in place for miscarriages, um, you now have a struggle of seeing how you can develop, how you can progress. Um, so that is something that I'm trying to overcome, um, just seeing where and how I can progress in the field of gynecology because it's definitely something that I find extremely interesting. Um, and just also branching myself out there, trying to really enhance my knowledge so that I can actually be the best person that I can be. So yeah, um, if you are finding or think that gynecology is for you, um, I would say definitely go for it. Um, don't limit yourself as to when you should go for the job because um, for example when I started I just said to myself that oh I'll do it later on in my career but here I am doing it now and I feel like if there's something if it's, even if it's not gynecology but if it's a specialty that you know you really enjoy or since you've been on placement as a student you've really loved um, when you qualify don't feel the pressure of working on a generic ward to I quote gain skills if you know that there's something you love just do it just do it and just focus on being the best you can at it and then later focus on specialising. I feel like it's important to not limit yourself as well and um, once you work somewhere you feel comfortable somewhere that shouldn't be the end of the story. I feel like it's really important to progress, it's really important to specialise and be the person you want to be um, and yeah so I would say definitely don't limit yourself and it's even advice for myself like don't limit yourself um, and be that person, be the person that can inspire another individual, another generation um, and be the best that you can be at your job which is my advice to you and my advice to myself as well so yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, and tune in for my next video next week thank you for watching, bye